Narrative recapped here. Today I'm going to show you a thriller film called Panic Room. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Walking along the streets of the Upper West Side of Manhattan, sharply dressed Meg Altman, and realtor Lydia Lynch. Lydia pressures Meg to be hasty with her purchase, with claims of the home being gone soon and the market being tight. Meg gently chides her young daughter Sarah for riding her scooter down the street, but Sarah dismisses her. Upon arriving at the property, they're greeted by a snide remark from the tourer Evan, who disapproves of Lydia's tardiness. The four head inside, and Evan starts giving them an eloquent rundown of the property. With how spacious and beautifully designed the home is, Meg marvels at it. Evan proceeds to showcase the working elevator, then heads upstairs to tour the rest of the place. While surveying the third floor, Meg gets asked what she does. She explains that she'll be going back to school in Columbia, and Lydia supplies that her husband is in pharmaceuticals. Evan comments that he didn't realize she was Stephen Altman's wife, and Meg politely tells him that she was until recently. Before any awkward silence could form, Evan carries on with the tour. Lydia tells her more about the previous owner, who is the infamous Sidney Pearlstein. He was reclusive, wealthy, and paranoid, and his kids sued each other over the estate. As it turns out, they can't even find half his money. Finally, they arrive at the master's bedroom, and immediately, Meg notices something off. She asks if it was supposed to be smaller than it should be, impressing Evan. He notes that she was the first person to notice as he pushes the full-body mirror, revealing the hidden room behind it. With a completely utilitarian look, that concealed section of the house serves as a panic room, an infallible safeguard against home invasion. It has concrete walls, a buried phone line separate from the main line, its own ventilation system, and an array of surveillance monitors that watches nearly every corner of the house. With an uncertain smile, Meg comments that the whole thing is making her nervous. Upon Meg's inquiry, Evan explains that the door is constructed of very thick steel to keep anyone from prying it open. It has a full battery backup, so even if the power's out, they can stay safe there. To demonstrate, Evan closes the door with a press of a button, trapping the three of them there. He then opens the door, revealing Sarah, who's waiting outside. Amazed, she quickly claims it is her room and steps inside while Meg and Lydia step outside. Meg calls the door a hazard, so Evan shows her that it operates similarly to an elevator door with its motion sensors. It won't close if it's blocked, even by just your ankles. When Evan closes the door again, the mirror door returns to its place against the wall, looking entirely inconspicuous. Despite Meg's reluctance, the mother-daughter pair end up moving into the large and unfurnished manor. Meg hooks a phone up, and after that, they have pizza for dinner. Later, Meg tucks Sarah in bed. She tells her daughter that it's disgusting how much she loves her before kissing her forehead and leaving the room. Afterward, the sorrow-filled woman gets time to herself in the tub, where she finally lets herself cry. In her bedroom, Meg gets the surveillance system running so she can sleep. That very night, two men traverse the house from the front door to the back until finally, they manage to break through an access panel. The surveillance panel notifies her that his own has been disabled, but Meg remains asleep. One of the invaders named Burnham quietly makes his way downstairs, but as he does, he notices a glowing sticker on top of an outlet, taking him aback. Suddenly, Meg wakes up to drink. Burnham continues to search the house, and when he sees Sarah, a troubled look crosses his face. He then peers into Meg's room, thinking that she's asleep, but the woman is just facing away from him. He heads over to the front door to let his accomplice, Junior, in. Burnham tries to tell him about the problem they have, but Manic, gum-chewing Junior doesn't want to hear it. He dumps his things on the ground, then opens the door for their next accomplice, Raul, who's wearing a balaclava to conceal his face. Burnham quietly demands to know who Raul is, but Junior assures him that he's experienced. Junior's mood quickly shifts, however, when he realizes that someone has moved into the house. Burnham is mad, saying that he screwed him over and they're on videotape, but Junior only keeps repeating that Meg and Sarah aren't supposed to be there. Burnham wants out, but Junior stops him. Still, he doesn't want to do the invasion when there are people there, so he tries to leave. Meg finally wakes up again, and she goes to the panic room to turn its lights on before leaving. As for the men, they're all caught in surveillance. Junior then pulls Burnham aside. He tells him to remember why he's there, and Junior stresses that while he wants the $3 million in the safe, Burnham needs it. Despite his inward conflict, Burnham resigns and instructs them to kill the phone lines. Meg heads to the panic room to shut the light off, and here, she finally notices the three intruders trying to walk up the stairs as discreetly as they could. Still, Junior ends up knocking Sarah's basketball down by accident, and this is when she fully realizes with sheer horror that there are intruders in her home. Meg makes a run for it, and when the three see her, Junior quickly instructs Raul to get the kid from the top floor while telling Burnham to stay put and not let anyone pass. Meg hurriedly takes Sarah out of her room, only to find Raul there waiting for them. He tries to chase them down, but they quickly escape through the elevator. Being the calmer one, Sarah reminds her mother of the panic room then instructs her to press the emergency stop. Junior notices that they're going back up, so he rushes up the stairs to follow suit. When Junior and Raul come close to finally reaching them, Meg and Sarah make it to the panic room. Junior flips the mattress over in a fit of rage, causing Meg's phone to fall off the bedside. In the panic room, Meg checks on Sarah, asking her if she's shaky or if she has any chills. When she tries to check Sarah's watch, Sarah withdraws her arm, telling Meg not to worry about her. Back downstairs, Junior is panicking, 
but Burnham comes over to tell him that he locked the roof access to trap the Altmans there. He then mentions that she couldn't have hooked the panic room phone up since she'd have to do it through his company, Manhattan Security, and the paperwork says the phone still isn't connected. Meanwhile, Meg uses the public address system to speak with the trio. She bluffs about calling the cops, and when they don't seem phased by her warning, she tells them to take what they want and leave. With Burnham's instruction, Junior communicates with them through papers, and he tells them that what they want is in that room. Junior tries to tell her that he'll let her go, but Meg ends their conversation, pissing the petulant man off. While the men are drilling and barring the doors to lock them in, Sarah starts to go through the supplies roughly. Meg tells her to stop, reminding her of what could happen if she gets herself worked up. But when Sarah doesn't, Meg raises her voice at her, snapping the girl out of her erratic trance. Suddenly, the two hear a noise coming from below, so they both get down on the ground to listen. On a lower floor, Raul's trying to break the ceiling with a sledgehammer while Junior watches. Burnham comes in, demanding to know what they're doing, and Junior tells him they're coming in from below. Disappointed in their idiocy, Burnham walks away, and this is when he notices the propane gas sitting outside. After knocking at the walls in the bedroom, Burnham heads outside to bring the propane tank inside. There, he manages to connect the supply to the panic room's ventilation. Junior muses about how he thought they should do something like that, then tells Burnham to open the gas. When Burnham says that he already opened it, Raul coldly instructs him to open it more. Though he's a bit taken aback, he tries to remind them that they're just sending a message. Insistent and violent, Raul takes Burnham's place and releases more gas into the vent. Back in the room, Meg makes Sarah get down on the floor while she goes to check on the vents. The surge of propane hits her face, and she immediately starts coughing. While Meg frantically looks through the supplies, Sarah finds a small pipe and immediately calls Meg's attention, so they breathe through it. Outside, Burnham reminds Junior that they need them alive to break into the panic room, so Junior snaps at Raul to ease up on the propane to no avail. Meg returns to searching through the supplies until she eventually finds a torch. Sarah grows apprehensive, and she slowly tries to call out to her, but Meg makes her hide under a fireproof blanket. She covers herself in the blanket, too, and starts poking the lighter around the vent. Finally, Meg ignites the gas, and large, blue flames blow both her and the men back. The gas tank throttles and spins from the ignition while Junior keeps screaming to turn it off. With Junior's arm and the side of his face burning, Burnham quickly covers his arm with a cloth. Later, Sarah finds a flashlight, then returns to the pipe where she sees their neighbor across them, sleeping in his room. She shines the flashlight repeatedly to signal for SOS in Morse code. Meanwhile, Raul takes a furious Junior downstairs, wanting to talk to him in private. Sarah continues with her signals, and she starts getting worked up when the man still won't get up. Meg glances at Sarah's glucometer watch, and she notices that her daughter's sugar level is dropping. At the staircase, Raul calmly demands a third of whatever they find in there. Frustrated, Junior just agrees and congratulates him on the ski mask and the million dollars. Finally, the man from across the street wakes up. He walks over to his window to check the light out, but he doesn't seem to understand what it means. The two get desperate, and they start screaming for help amidst the heavy downpour of rain, but the man only pulls his blinds down. Raul and Junior's exchange sends Junior on a tangent, ranting about how all of this is his idea. He claims that he was the only one who put up with Pearlstein and that he played the part of a loving grandson who visited him and cared for him every weekend for two years. While they talk, Burnham stands by the doorway, listening in on them. When Meg looks at the cameras again, she notices that they're not in the bedroom anymore. She remembers that she left her cell phone by the bed, so Meg instructs Sarah to close the door if she doesn't come back. When Burnham goes down the stairs to interject between the bickering men, Meg makes a run for it. She rushes straight to the bedside table to try and reach for her phone while the flipped mattress is in the way. Unable to find it, she gets down on the ground, where she reaches for the phone under the bed. While doing so, she knocks the lamp over, alerting the intruders. Finally, she grabs hold of the phone then runs back to the room while the men quickly make their way back upstairs. With Meg safely inside, Sarah quickly shuts the door again before the men could get inside. Unfortunately, Meg doesn't even have a lick of signal there. Then, she remembers that she hooked up the main line, so they can cut into it if they find it. Burnham hears a noise from the bedroom, so he starts unscrewing the phone outlet. Suddenly, he sees the wires disappear as Meg manages to yank them out. Cursing, Burnham hurries downstairs while the two successfully get a dial tone on the phone. They dial 911, but the operator puts them on hold. Given the hectic situation, Sarah suggests that Meg should call her ex-husband, so she does. While they do, Burnham finds the main telephone line and starts breaking it. Meg manages to call Stephen, but his girlfriend's the one who answers it. After crudely telling her to put Stephen on the line, he picks up the phone, and Meg immediately asks for his help. But before she could lay out enough details, Raul comes in to break the distribution panel with his sledgehammer, cutting Meg's line off. At this point, Meg is in a state of desperation. After briefly losing her temper, Meg apologizes, but Sarah says sorry back. She tried not to tell her, but she finally admits to her mother that she's dizzy and hungry. Outside, Junior babbles about giving up and making an anonymous phone call to the police to tip them off and find the safe for them. While talking about how much he'll split and inherit, both Burnham and Earl will realize that there's more than three million in the safe. Burnham follows him, mad that he tried screwing them over after roping them into the mess. 
Junior retorts that he brought this onto himself since he was blinded by money because of his custody battle. Dismissive as ever, Junior tries to leave, but Raul suddenly shoots his head. Meg scavenging through the supplies for anything with sugar when Sarah calls her attention to the surveillance monitors. Horrified, Meg covers Sarah's eyes. Raul hauls Junior's body back inside to shoot him a second time, this time out of pure spite. Afterward, Raul's walking away from the corpse when a man suddenly speaks from the front door, asking what's happening. Raul points the gun at him and guides him inside before aiming at Burnham when he approaches the door. After instructing him to close it and get back inside, Raul bashes the man's face with his gun. Burnham tries to stop Raul, but he only intimidates him with his weapon. Through the man's driver's license, they find out that he's Stephen Altman. They ask him if he called the cops, and Stephen says no. Raul's confident that he's telling the truth, arrogantly claiming that people never lie when he points his gun at them. He proceeds to threaten Burnham with it, demanding him to come up with a way to break into the room on the count of three. Back in the panic room, Sarah's enumerating the Beatles' albums to calm herself down. Suddenly, Burnham fronts Stephen's license to the camera, making Meg gasp in terror. This catches Sarah's attention, and she's equally frightened as Raul puts on a show of beating her father up. Burnham tells them to open the door, while Stephen firmly orders them that they shouldn't before Raul hits him with a large light. Left with nothing to do, Meg could only scream in sheer frustration while Raul continually kicks Stephen's already bloody face. Burnham eventually shoves him away, then covers the camera with his jacket. Right after, the increasingly apprehensive Meg suddenly hears Sarah's glucometer beeping. Her daughter starts convulsing as a seizure hits her, and all Meg could do is try and keep her calm. Eventually, Sarah's seizure passes, and Meg checks the monitors to see Burnham hauling a seemingly unconscious Raul down the stairs. Meg surrounds her daughter with pillows, then kisses her cheek before leaving the panic room. She sees Stephen on the bed, unconscious, and she quickly makes her way to Sarah's room. It's revealed, however, that the balaclava-clad man that Burnham was carrying is actually Stephen, while Raul is just pretending to be Stephen. After grabbing Sarah's medication, Meg pushes her fears aside and tries to make her way back to the master's bedroom. While returning, though, she hears Burnham and Raul whispering. Burnham heads inside the panic room, and a look of remorse and uncertainty crosses him when he sees Sarah shivering on the ground. Meg braves through and makes her way down the stairs as quietly as she could. She then barges through the door that Raul's standing behind, making him fall over. She bolts to the panic room, but before she could get in, she and Burnham end up surprising each other. Suddenly, Raul grabs her from behind, making Meg drop the medicine pouch. The two struggle with each other until Meg falls back while accidentally pushing Raul into the panic room. Burnham quickly closes the door, and as it's sliding to a close, Meg hurriedly pushes the medicine pouch inside while Raul gets his hand stuck between the steel door and the frame. Though Raul's in extreme pain, Burnham refuses to open the door since he thinks that Meg has his gun. Meg overhears this, so she frantically grabs Raul's gun off the floor. Burnham calls out to her, saying that he knows she has the weapon. Meg runs to a security panel and speaks through it, demanding him to give Sarah her injection. When he doesn't respond, Meg shrieks at him, spurring the reluctant man into action. With an uneasy expression, Burnham asks Sarah what'll happen if she doesn't get her shots, so the pale, shivering, and clearly ill girl tells him coma and die. Finally, Burnham orders Meg to leave the gun and go downstairs. Meg quickly runs down, but she refuses to let the gun go. Burnham then opens the door, so Meg tries to return to the room as quickly as possible. The door closes again before she could get there, and Raoul's hand is now free. Though he's in excruciating pain, he threatens Meg, saying he'll kill Sarah if she tries anything that'll jeopardize them. Worn down, Meg could only agree and pleads them to just give her the shot while a now conscious Stephen listens to the exchange through the PA system. Back in the panic room, Burnham has sat Sarah up and propped her against the wall. While administering her injection, Burnham talks about wanting to put his kids in a place like theirs, then says that things weren't supposed to go this way. Slowly recovering, Sarah quietly thanks him. When Burnham announces that he gave her the shot, Meg leaves the bedroom and heads downstairs. She sees Stephen there, gets taken aback by his bloody state, then asks him if he can move. Stephen quietly tells her that he thinks his arm is broken. Meanwhile, Burnham readies his equipment so he can start trying to break the safe. Meg asks Stephen to raise his arm, then gives him the gun. Pained, he tells her not to do anything stupid, but Meg is sure that they'll kill Sarah. Suddenly, they hear the cops at the front door, and Stephen reveals that he did call them since her call scared him. Burnham and Raul see all this through the camera, and as Raul's starting to curse the former couple, Meg puts a sweater on then signals to a camera that she'll handle the police. Upon opening her door, she puts on a tipsy and sleepy act for the cops. Officer Keeney does the talking, and he questions her about the call she made to her husband. Meg tries dismissing it, coming up with different lies, but Keeney isn't buying it. With a thoughtful look, Keeney carefully tells her that she can make a signal, like blinking a couple of times, if there's anything she feels unsafe telling them about. Meg stares at him as if contemplating her decision before promising Keeney that everything's fine there. The police leaves and Burnham gets to opening the safe using his equipment. While Burnham's busy and Raul's writhing in pain in a corner, Meg starts breaking the cameras with a sledgehammer. Sarah watches her, and as she does, she hides her injections in her pocket. Meg then takes Stephen, who's still in his chair, near one of the windows, then gives a lamp for him to hold. Burnham eventually manages to open the safe, and there, they find 22 bank bonds amounting to $22 million. He hides the bonds in his jacket, 
then assures Sarah that she's going to be okay. The three leave the panic room, with Roel keeping a hold on Sarah's shirt. Burnham tries opening the doors, only to realize that they're all locked. They eventually make their way downstairs, but before they could go further, Stephen suddenly shines the light on them, his gun pointed at Burnham. Roel quickly takes Sarah with him to hide behind a wall, and the bloody, still sitting man simply tells them to let his daughter go. Roel shows himself to Stephen but still refuses to let Sarah go. On the other hand, Meg slowly and silently comes up from a room behind them, a sledgehammer still in hand. When Sarah sees her, she immediately moves away from Raoul so Meg can hit him with a hammer, making him fall down the stairs. Burnham runs away, and he quickly escapes. Despite his injuries, Raoul still manages to get up the stairs. Due to his limited mobility, Stephen keeps missing his shots, and Raoul manages to tackle Meg down. He proceeds to sock Stephen in the face, knocking him off his chair and making him drop his gun. Stephen screams, and Burnham hears him while trying to leave the property, making him stop in his tracks and look back. With his legs practically out of commission, Raoul grabs the sledgehammer and uses it to support himself until he can grab Meg and get on top of her. They both struggle, with Meg desperately intercepting Raoul's attempts to strangle her. Raoul then slams Meg's head against the floor, almost taking her out, so Sarah jumps on the man, repeatedly stabbing him with her syringe to get him off her mother. Barely faced, Raoul punches Sarah's face, knocking her back to the fireplace. Sarah could only scream and scream when Raoul grabs the sledgehammer. Meg regains consciousness again, with Raoul on the brink of breaking her face. But before he could, Burnham shoots him in the head, killing the cruel man once and for all. After promising Sarah that she'll be okay, Burnham leaves the gun and escapes once more into the rainy yard. Just as he does, sirens blare, and the SWAT team barges into the house, with Officer Sweeney there. Though Burnham comes close to escaping, he gets surrounded by the SWAT members, demanding him to move away from the fence. Burnham does as instructed, then gets on his knees with the bank bonds in his hand. When the officer orders him to open his palms, Burnham has a hopeless look on his face as he obliges. The bonds scatter in the wind, looking no different from useless scraps of paper. Time passes, and Meg and Sarah are on a park bench, with Sarah lying on her mother's lap. Together, they look through the newspaper for a new place to live. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.